Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead and give this channel a subscribe, share it, leave some messages and comments, hit that like, that thumbs up button. Also hit that notification bell so you can be informed on all upcoming episodes down the line. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into the topic of this show, and that is paperwork. Paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. Let me see your paperwork, homie. So here's my take on the whole paperwork system, because I've kind of seen it evolve over the years. And we're going to get into the, the, the breakdown of it, how this really started to transpire in the California prison system, how it pretty much set the pace all the way across the board from coast to coast in every state up into the feds. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the federal paperwork system, and we're going to sort of get into how it works and how it don't work, because it's not always clear cut and dry, this whole paperwork thing. And I'm going to give you some examples on how paperwork horribly failed in a few situations. All right, so paperwork, what is it? Why is it important? And, and what does it really tell you when you get it? All right, you hear a lot of content out there. You see a lot of these guys on these different channels talking about paperwork, better have your paperwork, 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 and all that. And, and you better bring it in when you hit the yard. You better shove it up your ass and your nose and your ear, down your throat. Whatever it is to get it in there, you better have it. See, here's where I don't really know how that's even possible. And I'm going to explain it to you, and hopefully it makes sense to you, right? Because I know a lot of people are easily entertained by a lot of this shit, but you're not really getting the whole story and the picture and, and, and the history behind it. And, and the, the whole makeup of, of what really constitutes paperwork. Okay, so when you touch down in a California prison, right, you'll go to the reception center. In that reception center, you'll sit waiting for your counselor, your CC1 is what it's called, anywhere from 30 to sometimes 180 days. Man, I've seen some cats sit in there for about a year before they finally seen their counselor. Get lost in the system. So you're waiting for this counselor to show up. When this counselor shows up, you're going to go into a little room, just the two of you, and they're going to tell you your points, your time, when when your your expected release date is, your your maximum release date, how much parole time you got to do, all these other factors, and they're going to ask you, "So where do you want to go?" But a lot of cats are going to try to get as close as they can to get to home. You and uh, 200, 300,000 other people are trying to get to this one prison because it's close to home, and that's not always going to work out so well. So that initial touch base with you is basically to let you know that they have developed your C file or they have gotten your C file out of the archives. They got all your information. They got all your abstract of judgment and all your minutes from the court. And... You're ready to go on to the next level to hit a main line, wherever it is. So once you hit that main line, you're not, you're not showing up with nothing. You don't get a, um, any paperwork with you when you see that counselor. I don't care what these dudes say. It don't happen. You might get a little paper that you signed and that you want to go to this spot or that spot, but that's, that's it. It's very like limited is what's on that paper. Um, you touch down on that yard you have to go see the CSR committee before you even get any kind of paperwork from them. So you're going to go to the CSR. It usually takes about two weeks. You'll hit an orientation building in whatever facility you land in, like Sentinella back in the 90s and shit. You went to Sea Yard and you walked around in a red jumpsuit, burgundy jumpsuit, waiting to go see the CSR. And they were going to ask you, well, what do you want to do? You know, where do you want to go? Do you want to get your GED? What kind of vocational classes do you want to take? Vocational, let's say, um, graphic arts or, or, or dry cleaning or upholstery. Then you'll go to some place like A yard. Or if you want auto mechanics, you'll probably you'll go to D yard. And, and this is this is how it works. Once you hit that yard within about 30 days, you'll get that 128 G. It'll be shot to you in the mail. <coughs> and that'll be all the information that they had. It'll say who you are, where you're from, gang affiliations, nicknames, 
how many points you got, how much time you got, if there's any confidential information, if you have any uh, registry restrictions, all that shit. Doesn't say if you're a snitch. That right there, it does not say. It's just a basic breakdown of who you are. All the paperwork, everything else. Now, when you're talking about bringing in your police report or your discovery and, and all the shit from the court, if you could shove all that up your ass and bring it in, you a bad, bad motherfucker, man. <laughs> because a lot of them documents, it's a lot of paperwork, man. A lot of paperwork. You, you're a bad man if you could shove that up your ass. Because don't think that you're going to get in there. And just pull a couple of, you know, interesting point papers out of that report and try to present it to some llavero or blaquero or something like that and say, here, here's my paperwork. That shit ain't going to fly. It ain't going to do them no justice. I've had people do that before. They're like, here, here's my shit. And I'm like, okay, well, this is a document that has 26 pages. Why, am, why do I only got page three, page seven, and page nine? Where's the rest of it? Get, get this shit out of here, man. Come back to me with all of it. Have your lawyer send it in or whatever. In the meantime, while you're waiting for your 128G, you can, you can ask your lawyer or somebody to send you all that stuff in the mail. That you could do. And you could take that shit straight with you or you can have it sent to you right when you touch down. Normally, you'll get about 30 days to get that in line. The reason why they give you 30 days is because it takes 30 days to get that 128G. So that's it in a nutshell when it has to do with paperwork. And how this paperwork really started, let's go back in time to the history of it. So the early 90s, the prison system wasn't as big as it is now. And the three strikes law came into place, and that's when they started building all these new prisons. They built Corcoran, I believe it was around 1989, and then from there they just started building prisons all through the 90s because of the three strikes law. And it wasn't as many people as it is now, so you got all this influx of bodies coming in. You don't know who everybody is. I mean, back in the day, it was a little bit easier to figure out who's who. Because all you got to do is, is ask somebody. Somebody knows you somewhere. Your reputation stands out. You can get on that phone. You can find someone out. Another one is, is if you run them with a car, they're going to come at you with the birthday card. They're going to ask you what your CDC number is, what your name is, where you're from, all that shit like that. You're going to put it down on a piece of paper. They're going to run your name without your paperwork. So there's a lot of things that are in play outside of paperwork. But I hear a lot of these dudes, it sounds like they only rely on this paperwork. <clears throat> and that just goes to show you how dumb a lot of these people are that are running things. Because I got to tell you, man, for people that, that put themselves in the position to be shot callers, to be the main dude, a lot of times they didn't have no choice. They didn't want to do it. Or they were a crash dummy that everybody that was smart and were real convicts and knew that we'll put this idiot up in the front so if anything happens, he's the one that's going to wreck. It happens all the time, you know? And and that's just what it is. And you get a lot of these dudes that don't know what the fuck they're doing, man. Don't have any idea what they're looking at when they're even looking at this paperwork. I've seen this one dude get, get beat up because on his 128G it said confidential file is noted. Now that doesn't necessarily mean he snitched on somebody or he's a rat. That could mean that somebody dropped a 1030 on him somewhere. Some kind of confidential information against him that was presented to IGI, the goon squad, and it's, it's noted in his C file. Doesn't necessarily have to be that he's a rat. Most of the time, if he is a rat, it's not going to show up as confidential information. That's not what the confidential file noted is. Deals with 1030s. It deals with investigative reports that are on the specific person in question. That's what that is. Some people don't get this shit, though, and they'll stab that dude. I'll give you another story, man, and this one right here is just like, this is the shock of the century, how this even happened. So we have this one guy, and I'm not going to say no names. I mean, I see people on some of these channels, they're throwing out all these different people's names and all that. That's a no-no in my world, man. You don't throw people's names out there unless you get their fucking permission to do it. But I'm just going to say this dude was on the yard with us. And he was cool, man. He had his 128G, had his discovery, had his everything. Next thing you know, this new cat shows up. This new cat comes with some paperwork on this dude right here, man. On this cat. He says, hey, man, I got some, I got this right here, man. This guy snitched on me. He's a rat. He's working with the, he's working with the Udas and all that. He's got to go. This dude was able to talk a good game, you know, because he had some tattoos. He looked the part, the optics that I told you about. 
He had all this canteen coming in. He had all these hyenas visiting him. He's always up on the phone and all that shit. So they right off the bat were as dumb as a lot of these fools are. Okay, let's go kill him. They went and stabbed that fool up and got rid of him. Later on down the line, it came out in the wash that this dude was the real rat. That he was working with some kind of a drug task force unit in whatever city he came from. And that unit doctored up a phony report saying that this guy gave up information. It was bogus. They sent that, they sent him in with it so that he could play the mole role. He could get in there and, and soak up all kinds of information and get people busted. This is how shit works sometimes, man. Perfect example of how the paperwork system completely failed and broke down. You can't rely on paperwork alone. Because the whole thing is, like I said, the 128G ain't going to show you nothing, really. If you're a sex offender, it's going to show. It's not going to show if you're a rat. The only way you're going to find out if somebody's a rat is you got to look at the police report of his case. And if he gave up some information, it might not even be in that report. Now, if you got two co-defendants and they both got police reports that one doesn't have the information, the other one says that this dude's ratting on him and all that, Chances are they're not going to hit the same institution anyways because they're going to be listed as, as, as enemies. They'll, they'll probably end up being in that 1030 because they're going to ask you when you get to reception, do you have any enemies or anything like that? And this dude knows he ratted on somebody. He is encouraged more than likely by whatever agency arrested him or he gave information to to list that man as an enemy so you don't hit the same yard with him. Happens all the time. It's just the way it works, man. And, and somebody that just touches down on the yard and says, you know what, hey, this guy over here told me that guy's a rat. That's not good enough in a lot of cases because people throw that around all the time. I've seen a lot of bad calls, man, where people get stabbed because somebody trusted this dude's word over this guy with no information to back it up. Bad call. Bad call, man. I, like I said, I've seen a dude get whacked. He was actually pushing some weight for somebody they whacked him because this other dude was pushing weight for somebody else. He got rid of him because he didn't like him. Turns out later on that this dude made up the whole thing. Wasn't even true. So it's miss me with the bullshit that the paperwork is 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 100% bona fide. The answer to solving all your management problems and and information regarding your car because it don't. It don't. I'm telling you that right now. It didn't used to be a thing in the past, but now it's a thing because of so many people. And, and if it doesn't say that you're a sex offender or anything like that, it's it's not really that valid. Now, the, here's, the, here's the deal in the feds. Here's the deal in the feds. The feds put out what's called a PSR, pre-sentencing report. It's compiled by the probation officer that takes on the case digs into your whole history through NCIC, through wherever you lived, and, and they put it on this report. I mean, shit, man, in my PSR, they went they went all the way back to my fucking high school days, man, and, taught, and got records from the high school that I was at. And then they'll basically look at your category, your your base offense, and, and whatever that score is will determine where you go. Whether you go to USP, what it is. And it'll have, like, little brief notes about a lot of your cases, little breakdown from the police report, what's in it, what's ever in NCIC. A lot of times that shit won't give up no, no information. A lot of times when these dudes are cooperating with the feds, there's no paperwork behind it. There's nothing written down. It's all notes that these people take. Now see me, I know the law. I've been in and out of the law library for years, man. I can, I could tell you all about the title 15, the Dom penal code, all of that shit. And I know how to, what to look for and, and how to identify when something ain't right, when something just don't sit. But paperwork ain't going to tell you everything. It ain't going to give you the full picture on nothing. It might make you feel good. It might make the guy who's in charge, who's getting a little piece off of everybody's action, think like, ooh, I don't got to take care of this guy or I don't have to do this. And a lot of times nowadays, they're not even killing these dudes. They're just giving them a zipper and, and sending them to the S&Y yard. Or, or talking him into walking off the yard or punching him a couple of times in front of the in, in, in front of the, the guard station or whatnot and, and sending him on his way. And 
basically in a nutshell don't believe everything you hear about this paperwork system because it ain't 100 percent foolproof i'm telling you this right now you want to go ahead and be entertained be stupid and believe all this nonsense go right ahead but it's not 100 percent, man i'm telling you straight up a lot of times this shit ain't showing up on reports and when you go to the feds your PSR will not touch down on that yard. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do with it. Try to shove that up your ass. Good luck. You've got 11 inches of paper that you got to shove up in that crack and, and get on that con air and, and fly wherever you're going to fly. Ain't going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. And you're not going to get that sent to you by your lawyer. You're not going to get it in the mail. Because according to... The Department of Justice memo put out by John Ashcroft, you can't have your PSR. It slips through the crack, don't get me wrong, but it's not mandatory that you get it. Basically, nobody has paperwork. You could go and appeal your case in the, in the law library. Somebody could look you up in PACER or whatever, but that's not even going to give you the clear picture. It's not 100, man. If you're going to be running a yard, you're going to be doing all that, you need to do your homework. You need to stay actively involved with people on the streets. If you about anything, then you got contacts out there. If you got contacts out there, you're going to find out real fast who's who and what's what. But if somebody's working real deep with the Hudas, you know who I'm talking about. He had clean paperwork. He was one of the fellas. There was nothing written down that said he was snitching, but he was. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking that paperwork is going to solve all your problems, because it's not. Till next time, I'm out.